What's up? What's up, party people? Ho big holler. Um, uh, big um, big shout out to everybody with the cameras on. Uh, party people. All right, cool. By the way, I got my Fall Boss hoodie on. Maybe you guys could be so lucky later today. Getting some gear. Um, cool. So we're gonna hop on. Uh, we're gonna. Um, what's up, everybody? Uh, all right, cool. So we're gonna talk about circle, uh, circle prospecting. Yeah, but we're gonna talk about like a superpower that you guys all have right now. Uh, let me record this thing. Actually, he's asked the host to It's already recording, sir. All right, cool, awesome. So, hey, Lauren, if you can hear this, <laughs> dude. Lauren, we um, I just did a training on Rise. We're gonna get that that training tomorrow. Can we use that for social media content, please? Can you like make sure to grab that? Um, hey guys, so you everyone that's here has a really really special superpower. Um, you guys have, you guys have buyers. Who here has buyers that are willing to willing and able to buy a house, but they just don't have one to buy? Me. All right. Awesome. Jerry, we're going to change that for you this week. We're meeting this week, right? So um, cool. Yeah, we all do. So guess what? What I'm here to tell you guys, I'm going to tell you guys a secret. Um, don't tell anyone this or I'll deny it to the day I die. Um, I used to circle, pro I used to call neighborhoods and tell people, hey, um, hey, I have a buyer that's looking to get into your neighborhood. Have you ever thought of selling? But I was lying. I didn't have a buyer. <laughs> and it was, a sh I had a mentor that told me that's a shitty thing to do. And I didn't understand how or why, but like, sometimes I just believe the believable person. Like I believe that mentor. I was like, okay, I won't do that then. And I just stopped doing it. Right. And then when I had a, but then something magical happened when I actually had a buyer for that neighborhood and I called it Two, one of two things happened. I either found them a house or actually one of three things happens. These are all positive things. One, I found them a house. Two, I got a what? Begins with an L. Mine rhymes with schmlist, schmlisting. Listing. I got a listing, right? Or the third thing, I brought value back to my buyer and told them that I was working for them. Hey, Mike, you know what? I, I know we haven't found anything. Um, Hamid is trying to get in to the training. Um, uh, maybe just drop in the training the Slack, like, hey, new link. Um, the third thing that you can do is just report back to your buyer that you're doing something for them. My friend Amanda Cruz told me about a week and a half ago that the current that the modern consumer is looking for an aggressive agent, right? Anyone can process a transaction. Anybody can open up a door. And if you can't communicate how you're different and what you're doing to help them provide value, they're not going to work with you. And they shouldn't, right? So again, this is me. The days of uh, putting a, a search in the MLS, a lot of you guys don't even know about this shit. You used to be able to put a search in the MLS like 10 years ago, and it would spit out a $10,000 commission check. You didn't really have, I remember, well, now we got to work for it, right? If I, if I ask one of you guys, hey, who are your top three people? And you're like, well, it's Mary. Cool. What's the next action item that you're taking for Mary to find Mary a house? If the answer is, oh, yo, I'm waiting for, I'm monitoring the market. I'm sending your houses. I'm waiting for something. If you say, hey, I'm waiting for something to come on the market, that means that you're saying to me and to your client, like, hey, I'm waiting for another realtor to do my job for me. Right? I'll say that again. I'm waiting for another agent to go and do my job for me. Yeah. Now, um, this is going to be a difficult market. Has anyone put in an offer on a house recently and like not had it accepted? Me. Multiple offers? Yeah, me. Yeah, all, everybody, right? So that's everybody. <laughs> what we're doing is here, this is a community, and we get to laugh together, cry together, break things together, right? So it's kind of cool, right? So there's a lot of us that are going through the same the same challenges. Um, Chris, dude, you know what, man? Uh, it, what's really cool is when you find an off-market, and then you bring it to your buyer, and you put it all together, and there's no highest and best and by the way, I'll share something with you guys. When you do an off-market deal and there's no highest and best, there's no craziness, there's no insanity. Does anybody feel like, show me like group hands, does anybody have anxiety when they submit an offer and you find out there's multiple offers? It fucking sucks, right? Right? Do you think 
the consumer has that same anxiety? Do you think they share that anxiety with you? And do you think it's like more? Do you think it's like a higher level of anxiety on their end? Right? Yeah. Um, imagine if you could like take that away. That's like a superpower. It's like a healing, like Jesus, Buddha, God, whatever touches you and heals you. Like that's what you can do, man. Like you can do it. And like, you know, it's funny. You see people like, you know, Ethan and I think Andrew's happening. Like you get, these guys are like hitting the phones and grabbing listings. Hey, Lauren, how many listings do we have coming up? Approximately. Uh, we had, we have one today and we have, I think four or five for this Tuesday. Very cool. So we've got listings hitting the market, right? And the majority of those are from prospecting. Shout out to you guys. That's like where my heart lies. That's how I built my real estate business is I prospected every single morning. I went out and found it and got it myself. Cause my phone didn't ring, man. I didn't have Zillow flex. I didn't have whatever. My phone did not ring. If I didn't go and pick up the phone and make calls and talk to people, if I didn't treat it like a contact sport, it wasn't happening. So what we're going to go over today is we're going to go over, um, we're going to go over circle prospecting, man. Cause if you guys have a buyer, you should like all I wanted. I remember like, I was like scared to call a neighborhood cause I didn't have a buyer and I didn't want to lie. Right. And so, and, but when I got a buyer for a neighborhood, it gave me confidence to just light that neighborhood up and give them a call. Right. <clears throat> and just try and find someone. So I'm going to dive into this training right now. Uh, let's see, let me move this over here. <clears throat> you guys can see, see where it says circle prospecting. Yep. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Circle prospecting. Boom. What is circle prospecting? Um, how does it work? Four simple steps. It's simple, but it's not easy. Step one, we're going to prospect for appointments. Step two, we're going to set an appointment. Three, we're going to build our pipeline. Four, we're going to follow up. Cool. Guys, when you're circle prospecting, this is what happens. People start doing it and then this is like everything in life. They start something and it doesn't work immediately and they stop. This is me with my diet. <laughs> this is me with like building muscle. Like <laughs> This is like all that stuff, right? Um, you got to build up to it, right? It's just like when you meet someone, you don't go get married. You like date, meet each other's family. You go on vacation, you get an apartment, you get a puppy, right? <laughs> and then you get married, right? Like all these things happen. So your goal is to find someone that wants to sell their house in the next 12 months. Um. Ethan, I'm talking to you, right? Um, the beautiful thing here is when you can, and Raph too, dude, I know Raph's making calls, man. I'd like to kind of talk to you about some things here today too, but that's cool. But if you find someone that wants to sell their house in the next 12 months, your whole your whole appointment, your whole deal, that's awesome. That's great. I hear agents say like, oh, they're going to, uh, yeah, that guy's not going to sell till October. That means you have now until October to get in a relationship with that person and like become, earn the earn the right to be their realtor for life. Right. Um, anyone that says they're they want to sell in the next 12 months is an awesome lead. That's like what you want. If you if someone wants to sell their house in October and you can drip on them between now and October, someone answer this for me. How many agents do you think they're going to be interviewing in September to list in October? One to three. Should be one. Should be just you. <clears throat> Could be one to three, correct. But really, if you get in a relationship with them and you talk to them for like eight months, they're probably just going to list with you. Or this is the value. Step two is to set the appointment. Um, you know, I kind of want to dive deep on this. And, you know, we, we have this training for about a half hour and and I can, you guys let me know at the end of this thing, if you see value in this, I can just keep going. I'll keep training on this for like the next few weeks or whatever that looks like. But, um, hey, Raph, can I pick on you? <clears throat> yeah. Cool. You've been making a lot of phone calls, correct? Yes. Cool. How many of those are converting into like appointments? Uh, just give me one sec. So I actually or, keep track of everything. Um, or let me ask you this. The ones that like, when I see you in the off market Slack channel, it says this guy would sell his house for seven fifty and Howell. Did you meet that person or did they just tell you over the phone? Like, Hey, I would take blank. So I had something set and then he canceled. I just keep following up with him and then, Eventually, I'll just answer again at some point. Okay. Okay. So there was no appointment, right? We didn't go meet that person? No. 
Okay, cool. So what happens here is, so then, but he said he wanted to sell his house, correct? Yeah. So what's missing? His motivation? If you, you had the guy on the phone, he said he wants to sell his house, correct? Yeah, he, he said he was, he would sell it for 750. He wants to move to Tom's River by the water, but he doesn't want to deal with the people coming through his house and all that because he's busy with work. He said he didn't want to worry about putting it on the market. Cool. Are you, can you sell a house? Yes. Yeah. Does that guy, if that guy hired you to sell his house, would you sell it? Yes. Cool. So do you think that there's a gap there between the communication of like, hey, I want to sell my house and you getting yourself into his house so you can meet with him to discuss that opportunity? Yeah. Cool. All right. Awesome. <clears throat> so when he said, hey, yeah, I, I want to. So <laughs> congratulations, by the way, you're getting on the phone. So this is a funnel. Everything's a funnel. So you, you're, you're making calls. You're getting people on the phone. You're finding motivation. That person's going to sell. That person is two deals. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. His motivation just not like all the way there right now. Is that correct? Yeah. Ref, let me ask you a question. How many people on your real estate team approximately? 45. Sure. Do you think any one of those people might have a buyer in wherever that guy's town is? Yeah. That's why I told him too, that we have the thing with Zillow and then. He was open to me coming by, taking a look, taking photos, and then he canceled like the day before. Okay. We can dive yeah. into all that, man. So um, let me see if I have a script here for that. Uh, this is just sold. All right, cool. No, that's not there. So on these appointments, I talk about how we sell houses off market, right? So for that person, like what, what I want to talk to you guys about, the whole goal is just to get in the house. You cannot sell someone over the phone. Does that make sense? Like you're not going to be able to get a listing over the phone. You're not going to convince them to work with you over the phone, but you have to convince them to get an appointment, right? But it sounds like you did the right things. You just were talking to him about like, what, what did you, can you take me through what you said to him? Uh, like, Hey, so let's role play it. Yeah, you know what? I really want to sell this house. Um, I I, and I want to get rid of this. I want to move to Tom's River, but I don't want anyone coming through my house because I work. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. So my team, we're actually partnered with Zillow. Um, there's like 45 agents on our team. And what happens every day is that we have people from Zillow just calling us all day, every day. And I guarantee you that one of our team members, they probably have a buyer for your home. But I would have to come by and take a look at the property to see the inside, take some photos just to give them an idea of what, what they're looking at. Cool. Can I tweak that for you? Yes. Have you ever heard the phrase telling is not selling? No. Cool. Yo, everyone should watch the movie Boiler Room. Cause I, if you, I reference it often. There's a lot of cursing and things I can't say in that movie. Telling is not selling, right? <laughs> you're telling this guy, like you're talking at him about how great you are, right? That's more about, is that more about you or is that more about him? Uh, me. Cool. Who do we want to make it about? Him. Cool. Let's, can we reverse the role play? Yeah. Hey, Mike, it's, this is Raf from Oz Group. I just saw that your house was on the market a while ago and then it came off. Um, I was just looking to see if you were still interested in selling that property. Nah, man, I'm busy with work. Uh, we don't really want to deal with the people coming in and out. But if you have somebody for 750, you know, you definitely have a deal. Cool. So you're a you're a seller at 750, is that correct? Yes. Cool. If that house sold, where were you gonna go? Uh we were looking to move to Tom's River, somewhere along the water, probably downsize a little bit. Cool. What's important about Tom's River? Just a smaller house or what else? The wife. That's where she wants to be. The wife, yeah. Dude, I get it, man. Um that's cool. In a perfect world, how soon does that? How soon are you in Tom's River? Uh, we're not really in a rush. Cool. So seven fifty gets it done. You're not in a rush. If you're there in two years, that's fine. You don't really care. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But seven fifty gets it done. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Well, let me ask you this. Um, my team and I, we actually sell two to three. The reason why I'm calling is we actually sell two to three houses a month that are like not on the MLS. 
whether your house is on the market or not, are not on the market, I'm probably going to get calls for your neighborhood. If I was able to bring someone by, obviously I'd make an appointment with you. If I was able to bring someone by that, that was dying to get in your neighborhood and was willing to pay your number, would you allow us to come through and see the house? Yeah, probably. Cool. How much notice do I need? Uh, it would have to be on the weekends just because I work during the week. Um, I'm really busy. And then obviously my wife would have to be there too. So either Saturday or Sundays work. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. And just so you know, man, my, my job is I'd like to save you commission. You know, like if I, uh, like I said, we sell, we work with a lot of buyers and the way that we do so much business is there's just not much inventory. And what we do is I'm going to share a secret with you. We have two lists of houses that are available. One list is all the houses on the MLS. MLS. That's like what everyone sees, right? That's what you see on Zillow. And then we have another list. These are off-market properties that would be available. We know it. We know them. We've identified them. We know the numbers and we can bring buyers to them. They're just not on the MLS. Does that make sense? So because we have this value, we have this off-market list of homes, we're constantly selling them and we're making life easier. This started during the pandemic when people didn't want people coming through their houses. They were scared. They didn't want to put their house on the market. They didn't want to open houses. That kind of sounds like where you're at. Does that sound about right? Yeah, for the most part. Cool. And you said that weekends work and you need about a day's notice. Is that correct? Yes. Awesome. Cool. Well, today's Thursday. I'm going to be in your neighborhood this Saturday showing houses. I love, I, I just need like a 15 minute walkthrough. I just want to take a look at the house. And then um, I'm sure you can imagine our buyers are from out of the area. They're from New York. They're from Pennsylvania. They trust that we know our inventory and we know our stuff. And um, I can't sell someone something I haven't seen. So I'd like to come by on Saturday. What's better for you, noon or 2 p.m.? Are you bringing your buyer with you? That's a really good question. Um, I'm sure you could imagine my buyers trust us to, to know our inventory. So I'm not going to bring them to a house I have not seen. I don't like, so all my buyer, the majority of my buyers are coming from out of town. They're relocating from New York, from Pennsylvania, things like that. So they trust that I know the inventory. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I don't know if I want you to just come with you alone. Okay. Do you want to sell your house? Yeah. But like I said, we're not really in a rush. Okay, cool. You that can person. bring your buyer and then, you know, then we could definitely talk about some numbers and you guys come by. Uh, yeah. And so, you know what? Our buyers on a really tight schedule, they trust me. So it's like anything, right? Like I know I have to know the product that I'm selling and I don't know if your house, um, I don't know what condition it's in. I don't know, you know, I'm taking your word for it. So in order for me to help you sell your house, I just have to take a quick 15 minute walkthrough. If that's not something that you want to do, then I, I, I don't, you know, I'm not going to be able to help you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's just set something up then. Not this weekend. Let's do next weekend. And I'll just talk to the wife about it. And if anything changes, I can just text you. Is this your personal number? I'm sorry. What was that again? That we could set something up for next weekend. This weekend, we're a little busy. It's a little too short of notice. So if anything changes, is this your personal number? Just so, you know, I could text you. Yeah. So, but the weekends do generally work. Is that correct? Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So yeah. Are you more of a morning, afternoon, or evening person? Evening. Cool. So then for, I'm seeing next Saturday is the 15th. Would 3 p.m. be better or 6 p.m.? Probably 6 p.m. Cool. So let's do this. Let's do a tentative appointment, right? I want to respect your time. Always say that. I want to respect your time. And then what we'll do is we'll confirm it the day before. How does that sound? Okay. Sounds good. Cool. Awesome. So I'll send you that calendar invite and I will see you the 15th at 6 p.m. Awesome. Sounds good. So people are always, that's the number one rebuttal, right? Like, do you have a buyer? Do you have a buyer? And what you have to say is like, hey man, I am I need to know my image. My buyers trust me when they come into town. I always lean on the out of town buyer thing. When they come into town, you know, when they come into town to see houses for two hours, they trust that I'm bringing, to a, bringing them to a, I understand their needs at such a high level. And I bring so much value to them that I'm only going to bring them to properties that work for them that hit their price point. And I want to respect your time, sir, ma'am, which means I'm not just going to bring random strangers into your house to walk through your house. Isn't that exactly what you don't want? Isn't that exactly why you don't have your house on the market? 
So if I can bring you, <clears throat> if I can use my skills and my network to, to preview your home and bring you someone that it works for and nail it on the first or second try, wouldn't that be a lot easier for you and make this, make this the seamless transaction that you're looking for? Yeah. So Raph, if, if they shoot you down, won't we let you walk through after all that? Do you think they're a seller? Yeah. You do. I don't, I don't think they're a seller. If they're not letting me through with all that, I, I don't think that they're a seller. Is that helpful for you, Raph? Yeah. No, maybe. Yeah, no, for sure. So it's it just, a- it just takes reps, right? So anyway, you know, the goal is to set the appointment. This is the secret to this whole thing. You just want to walk through the property. That's really it. You want to walk through the property. That appointment, when you walk through that property, can someone tell me what they think is the whole point of that walkthrough? Is it to get a listing? No, to bring right. values to the customers and the buyers because like we want to know uh, what they exactly want and is it the right property for them? That's true. Build, build a relationship. That's build correct. trust. Build trust. Correct. That was the answer. The answer is to build a relationship with the seller, right? It's the same reason why you pick up the phone on a, on a channel partner lead, on a Zillow Flex lead, and you just go meet the people, right? You just want an opportunity to meet someone to get in a relationship with them. And I always take it away. I say, hey, I'm not here to like, I'm not here to list your house. I'm not going to give you a marketing presentation. I just want to see, <clears throat> I just want to see the house, see the inventory. This is a great script. Everyone should write this down. My whole goal is I just want to come and take a look at your property, see if there's an opportunity there and see if I can help you. If I see that opportunity, I'm going to share it with you and help you. If I don't see an opportunity, we can shake hands and stay friends. And now at least I know the inventory when it comes on the market. The keyword is opportunity. It's hard for someone to not want to explore an opportunity. Hey, my whole goal is just to come over, take a look at your house, see how I can help and see where the opportunity is. And when I find that, I'm going to share it with you. By the way, it's March 1st. My team and I have written and closed 51 deals. We're doing a lot of business in your area. And if we can make this easier for you, we, I can, I'm going to bring that to you. If I can't, then I won't. Basically, these people and a lot of these people to find the one like the perfect matchmaker, it's hard, right? You have to talk to a lot of people. But what will happen is you're going to talk to a lot of people that you're going to get in a relationship with and you're going to work them. I'm going to say this to everyone here. Anyone in your database, this is clean database hygiene. Anyone in your database should be a nurturer and they should be called once a month for the rest of your life. You should be in the cadence of making calls. You're not making outbound calls. You're not going to sell houses. So the person that wasn't interested in January that you stopped calling, they should get a call every 30 days. The same with these people. Hey, we met at your house back in April. You said you were thinking about selling next year. Just wanted to check in and see what your real estate plans are for the rest of the year. Oh, Mike's getting a transfer to Seattle. We actually need to list now. This is what winds up happening. It's about having just having uh, conversations and then just following up with people. Um, what do we circle prospect? So you can circle, circle prospect just listed, just sold. Desperate buyer script. That's my favorite one. Only use this if you actually have a buyer and promote open houses. So we have Mojo Dialer. You can go in there. You can do a geographical circle, radius, neighborhood, whatever. <clears throat> and then you can go in and you can call whoever you want. Uh, Lauren just said we have like four listings hitting the market. Ethan, Ethan Circle dialed one of our listings like a just listed, I assume, or just sold or something like that. And he got another listing, right? That's what he did. Desperate buyer and seller. That's when you have a buyer, right? And then promote open houses. I'd say these number one and number two are the most valuable. Um, and number three is probably the least valuable. What do we say? Um, we're kind of at time here. I have another coaching call with the team. We kind of started late. Um, I don't know if Lauren can hear me. If the, So um, was this valuable to you guys? Do, are we on a good start here? Should we keep doing this? Need some feedback? No. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's excellent. Okay, thanks, Sarah. It, it's, a, it's a lot to get into. Um, we So what we'll do is this. Next Thursday, we'll continue on this. Everyone understands what circle prospecting is, right? What we'll do is then we'll go into scripts for next Thursday. Is that cool with everyone? Um, 
and cool. All right, I'm gonna hop on a coaching call. Sorry, we got started late, guys. I'm glad you guys got some 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 uh, some value out of this, and we'll continue. If everyone wants, somebody give me a thumbs up. Do you guys want to keep doing this next week? We'll move into scripts on circle dialing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. All right, guys. I'll see you guys on your coaching calls. See ya.